What's up, Foundation? Y'all might hear a little knocking, a little beating. I got some um, work going on around the house. But uh, <clears throat> don't worry about it. It ain't going to be too much. Man, I was going to... I was going to go live, but I decided, man, nah. But I'm going to get this quick little story in. You know what I'm saying? That I, Somebody had asked me some according, some about close to it. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm going to get your story in. Um, this is uh, about a dude getting killed in the Alabama prison system. Um, he was a notorious, man, notorious booty bandit. And... um. I'm talking about, man, he used to pray. He used to pray on them white boys some serious. Boy, he prayed on them some serious. And, um, you know, I used to just look at him sometimes and just wonder. I said, man, what, you know, what's, go what's going through this cat here head? You know what I'm saying? Um, that thing, you know, you, I didn't see it like that in the California prison system. That type of get down, you know, it happens. True enough, yeah, it does happen. But <clears throat> it don't happen to the point like it do in Alabama, you know what I'm saying, hey, they be on it, they serious about it, they serious about it, you know, so anyway, I'm going to tell this quick story real quick about what happened to one of the most notorious booty bandits in the Alabama State Prison, um, we was in, um, we were in West Jefferson Prison, and uh, West Jefferson Prison, that's their most maximum security prison, and so um, he had been running around. He was, he, was there, he was there. I see him all the time. I didn't really pay a lot of attention to him. You know what I'm saying? From I, I did, but I didn't. I, you know, I used to watch him from a distance because, you know what I'm saying, he used to just run around. He was always on the same thing, the same thing with him. You know, uh, new white boys would get off the chain, and they would come to the block, and um, <laughs> they was on it. This dude, he knew. Look, he was so serious that he knew – what day the chain, the certain chains came in from certain county jails, from certain areas of the, of the state, and he would uh he would leave he would leave out the block, and go all the way to the south side of the prison. The south side of the prison was um where the dorm living was. They had dorm living out there, and the, and it was out there about in the the yard around the dorm. If you could just walk the yard, you can go to the edge of the gate, and that where the main where the main back gate would open up to let the vans in for um new 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 coming inmates. So they would come in at the back gate. <clears throat> they would let everybody off the van in the gate. You could stand at the you could stand at this gate on this side and you could see over into, you know, who I was getting off the van. A lot of dudes used to go over there, see their homeboys getting off the van, you know what I'm saying, holler, well, what's up, what's up with or whatever. Then you had the then you had the stalking crew. You had the stalkers. You know. You know what they were stalking. So anyway, they would um, they would start picking and choosing at the gate. You know what I'm saying? If they seen what they liked or what they wanted, they would, you know, you know, hey, try to holler at dudes and you know, see, you know, they 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 started early. They wouldn't even give you time to get into prison. They start singling you out early. And this cat here, I'm not gonna say his name. He was a professional with it. He, I'm talking about he. Mm, he would go down through there. Hold on. Oh, man. Hold on. He would go down through there every chance he got. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> it was like a job with him. He wouldn't stop. He would, he, you know, he wasn't going to be stopped. It was just like a job to him. And so anyway, boom. They, I guess they out there, they would do their thing or whatever. So when um they would come in. Hold on. Somebody come Baby, yeah. you all right? Okay. <clears throat> and my wife, y'all, she's just getting off work. <clears throat> anyway, so one day, typical day, and you know, same day in the dorm, all this, all this. So when they would do, when they would go out to the gate and they would see who they was looking for, boom, they'd run back to the block. Now, there's a cold little system they had. They would come back to the block and they would tell the rest of the bandits, hey, look, I seen a dude coming in. He looked like this. He looked like whoop, 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 and wop, wop, wop.
Baby! Yeah. You at the window? Yeah. Okay. She's opening up the window for them. No, and they ain't, well, look, I got the, if you open up the window, the alarm, if you open up the front door, the alarm gonna go off. If you open up the back door, the alarm gonna go off. If you open up a window, the alarms will go off. It's gonna tell you the window opening, the back door, the front door, and she had the window doing something. She doing, she just walked in from work. Somewhere and sit down. Hey, anyway, back to the story. So what they would do, they'd run back down the hallway. Now, they would either pay the, um, the whatever inmate that was working in the shift office, the main shift office, to get whoever they was looking for sit down to the unit that they wanted them sit down to. Get them sit to whatever block they was in. If they was in two block, they'd go ahead and pay with the coffees. Man, I want this dude. He looked like this. He looked like that. I want him sent to two block or four block or one block. Whatever block that they was in that they wanted him sent to, they would go ahead and pay the dude now. Because the inmates was the ones who really did all the paperwork for real, for real. So anyway, then when they do that, they would run back down to the, um, they would come back down to the unit that they was in and they'd tell all the rest of the booty bandits, look, uh, it's a dude coming, the white boy coming through the door. He looked like this. He looked like that. He belonged to me. I already paid for him. I'm letting y'all know now. Don't, ain't, no, ain't nobody need to come, do say nothing, do nothing, anything, anything like that. So now, you know, that was a thing. They knew how it went. They, all the booty banners respected the rules of the booty banners. Okay. Now, they didn't ever try no black dudes like that. They didn't work like that with the blacks. They would only try the white boys like that. So anyway... What they would do, they would come in. When the dudes would come in, come down the hallways, they got they they got their mattress on their shoulder, and they got <clears throat> their property. You know, your property come in what they call laundry bags. All your little property, you can't travel but with two laundry bags. And uh, boom, they got their two laundry bags, and they coming on down. So when they as soon as they come through the door, they looking. You got two tiers up down on the left, up down in the middle. I mean, up, up down on the left. Then up, down, then you got some stairs, then you got up, down, going across this backside, on the left, on the right, like that. Then you got a big day room in the middle, shower downstairs and all that. Anyway, so here it is. These dudes were so bold, when the little white boys would come in, they'd run over there and grab their stuff from them. Grab the mattresses, and um, or either grab their property and tell them, I got your help. You Come on, come on, I know where you're going, because they already know what cell they're going to. But they ain't finna take them to the cell where they supposed to go. They finna take them to whatever cell they want to take them to so they can just do whatever they want to do. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes the white boys would, you know, would go for it. They'd actually follow their property or, you know, sometimes they they buck. Sometimes, man, what you doing, man? Get my stuff. Get my stuff. Something, you know what I'm saying? And it just wouldn't happen. They wouldn't follow that cell. They'd go into their cell, and dudes had to follow them to that cell. Man, I've seen some crazy stuff, man. I'm talking about, wow. Now, if they followed their stuff to that cell that the dude was taking them to, they seen a bad day. As soon as they get up in the cell and the door closed, they finna get beat down. They gonna go in as Todd and uh, come out as Toddalina. Whatever, you know. So, Boom. This one incident, this one dude, this one, the, the notorious, but I'm, I'm going to call him, um, I'm going to call him Booty Bob. This dude, Booty Bob. I'm going to call the dude, I ain't going to say his real name. <clears throat> I'm going to call him Booty Bob. He was, the, he was the worst one in the whole prison. The whole prison knew about him. The police knew about him, everything. Booty Bob didn't play. Booty Bob, big old black dude, man. Booty Bob was about, about 6'2". You know what I'm saying? Uh, he, black as the ace of spades. He black as the devil's heart. Um. He been on that iron pile, cut up, you know what I'm saying? And he, he wasn't no punk. Booty Bob wasn't no punk now, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you have to go down through there with him. You have to go down through there with him. But now, Booty Bob wasn't finna get into it with no regular dudes about nothing but one thing. If you go to messing with Booty Bob's boys, the, all, the, all, all the little sissy dudes he didn't gathered up, he he had about four of them. They, they they walk they would walk to the child together. He'd be in the front, and they'd be walking right in back of him like little ducks. Quack 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 quack. They sat all of them sat at the table. Boom. When he said when he sat down, they sat down. Um, 
they all shower together. When when Booty Bob get in the shower, all four of his boys get in the shower too. They all had to shower together. Booty Bob making sure wasn't no other uh, so-called real men in the shower with him. Couldn't get in the shower with him. So bang. They go, they, that's how it was. And Booty Bob, boy, he kill man, you had to you had to kill him. He'll kill you about one of them. He'll kill you about one of them. Them boys know, don't talk to nobody, don't come out themselves. None of that. They wouldn't do none of that. Booty Bob had a cold program going on. He was he was a jailhouse pimp for real. Time goes on, man. Time goes on. Booty Bob pulled this stunt one day on the chain coming in. Chain come in and um at this time, we were sleeping three to a cell. Yeah, they used to have a three to one cell. I'm talking about a bump, bump. They um they had put a whole nother bed in the cell, welded it up. I'm talking about you get up there, man, your nose and chest dang near touching the ceiling. Man, it was crazy. But anyway, um they put they put this one little white dude in the cell with another white dude. So it, it was it was cool for about two, three, yeah, I'd say about four days, five, six days. But now, unbeknownst to everybody else, Booty Bob had been on this new little white dude that came in. He had been jugging at him, talking to him, you know what I'm saying, propositioning him, doing all type of stuff. But did nobody know, you know what I'm saying? Wasn't nobody really, you know, tripping on At least I didn't know. Somebody else might have known. I, you know, I, I didn't know. But anyway, so the white dudes had been telling him, no, man, stop. Because the, the, the other white dude that was in the cell... With the other one, I'm gonna say white dude number one and white dude number two. Now, white dude number one was all had already been living in that cell. Booty Bob had been trying to get it, white dude number one, for the longest. White dude number one kept telling him, man, no, uh-uh, no, uh-uh, no, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Okay. So now here it is. They when the dude, when the white dude number two come in, little young dude, Booty Bob couldn't, he was beside himself. He was at him. Boy, he he couldn't, oh, man, I guess, you know what I'm saying? He was sweating bullets. He would, you know, get off from honey buns and off from stuff to eat and try to talk to him, and he kept propositioning them, and they kept turning them down, telling them, man, stop, leave us alone. We ain't like that. Man, stop, leave us alone. We ain't like that. But now Booty Bob didn't want to hear that. Booty Bob wasn't trying to hear that. All Booty Bob know is that he wanted to get at them. So now, what number them two in the cell for about two weeks? Now, all two weeks, Booty Bob had been at him, been at him, been at him. So now, here it is. Another white dude had got out of lockup. And they put, they put white dude, this white dude, I'm going to call him white dude number three. They put white dude number three in the cell with white dude number one and white dude number two. Okay. So now, boom. Here it is. You got white dude one, two, and three. Booty Bob, he he keyed in on all three of them. He wanted he Booty Bob wanted to have an orgy or something. I guess I don't know what was wrong. He's sick individual, but now he wanted to go down through there with all three of them. So I guess white dude number one and white dude number two had told white dude number three about Booty Bob. He pressing him, pressing him. Now come to find out, uh, white boy number three was a killer in his own right. Booty Bob didn't know. Did Booty Bob? He didn't look. He didn't look like no killer. He looked at just like White Boy One and White Boy Two, and all three of them looked like goof troops. You know what I'm saying, Pee Wee Herman's. But White Boy Number Three had a mental problem. He had a mental problem. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Now, uh, Booty Bob had a mental problem too, but now White Boy Number Three. Mental problem was volatile. So I guess, you know, white boy one, white boy two told white boy three about Booty Bob. And he was like, oh, I guess he talked him, pumped him up. I guess, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and to me, look, we finna, we finna do something about this cat right here. We ain't going for it. We ain't not going for it. It got to stop. So, okay, boom. <clears throat> um... From what I, you know, boom. White boy three, get it, white boy one. He tell white boy one, man, this Friday on the late night, you go ahead and start holding a conversation with Booty Bob. <clears throat> make Booty make Booty Bob think you like him. We're going to get Booty Bob in the cell. 
Now, at this time, you know, we locked down at 10 o'clock. Regular, regular lockdown was 10 o'clock. On the weekends, Fridays and Saturdays, we locked down at 2 in the morning. You know what I'm saying? We pretty much could run around, do whatever we want to do all night long. Um, the, the security was so lax, sometimes they wouldn't even lock down till break, you know, till breakfast and probably wouldn't even do it then. The door stayed popped open, whatever. You can do what you, you can do what you want to, man. It's supposed to be a maximum security prison too, man, to Alabama. But anyway, make a long story short, they tricked Booty Bob in the cell. And um this it was after lockdown. Didn't nobody really know what was going on. Didn't nobody really know what was going on. I guess they, you know, told Booty Bob they was going to do whatever they was going to do with him. And, you know, all three of them wanted him or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But now Booty Bob took his stupid butt on up in his cell with one, two, and three. White boy. So, bing. Didn't nobody hear nothing about it. Didn't nobody know. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no hollering. It wasn't no screaming. It wasn't no nothing. Didn't nobody know. Um, When, the, when, they, when they racked the doors... For breakfast, we locked down. We locked it. We locked down at two. They locked. They erect. They uh, run. They run breakfast about three o'clock. So um, when they racked it, when they racked the doors for breakfast, <clears throat> everybody went to breakfast and came back. Didn't know nothing. Still didn't know nothing. Still didn't see nothing. None of that. The police came around. To they the ones come and lock the doors after breakfast. When they come back to lock the doors, all you heard was a cold. Oh, oh. You heard the police hollering on his walkie-talkie. Uh, cold red. Whoop, 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 block. Whoop, 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 block. Come now, 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 now. <clears throat> so here come, the, here come the little goon squad like police running. They run up in the block telling everybody, get back, get back, get back. They shoot up the stairs and they go to white boy one, two, and three cell. It was horrible, y'all. It was horrible. Man, they had tricked Booty Bob in the cell and killed him. They killed, they killed Booty Bob. They had literally took their time killing him. Um, they they had um they had took a knife and they had literally cut Booty Bob's head off. They cut, they cut Booty Bob's head off, man. They had opened Booty Bob's stomach up and pulled all his intestines out. They had dug his eyes up out his head. They dug his eyeballs up out Booty Bob's head and had his eyeballs in a cup. They had took his blood and wrote devil worshiping stuff all on the walls of the cell. Just wrote all type of satanic stuff on the wall. They had his, they had his guts strewn all over the floor everywhere and blood was everywhere it, 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 it was bad man it was bad they did they did booty bob bad they cut it they cut his you know they cut his genitals off they had his genitals sitting in the sink boom they all three of them was covered all three of them was covered in blood like uh they was like they was little puppies playing in the mud they did, man, they did Booty Bob bad. Killed Booty Bob dirt dog dead. You know what I'm saying? Now, when I say they cut Booty Bob's head off, it wasn't completely severed, but it was it was all the way gone. It, it wasn't nothing but hanging on but the bone. They cut it, they cut, split his throat, wild, all, everything, man. Everything. Cut it, oh, wasn't nothing in it, man. Man, test, like I say, intestines gone everywhere. They did booty bob bad, y'all. <sighs> woo, man. Uh, as you tell, man, look, hey, woo, man, booty bob let his let his unnatural urges get him that day, and they dealt with booty bobs behind. Man, man, them white boys probably still on death row right now today. Yeah, they got it. Yeah, they still. Matter of fact, yeah, they still on death row. Yeah. <clears throat> Man, I had never. Now that's the worst. That's the most heinous, <clears throat> worst killing I have ever seen. In uh, whether it was in Alabama or California state prison, they did booty bob bad, y'all, man. Man, anyway, like I say, uh, 
Some stuff just don't pay. Some stuff don't pay, y'all. But I had to get that little story in, man, about man, about about the about the uh, white boy one, two, and three, man, killing Booty Bob. Booty Bob paid for paid paid for that little endeavorment with his life. And they like I say, they did him bad, man. Guts and stuff was everywhere. But anyway, um, I just had to get that one in real quick. Uh we'll be live, we'll be live. But anyway, big partner signing off, man. Hey gang, I don't bang, man. Avalon, I'm out. <laughs>